my Country Craft Corner. How in the world are you guys doing today? It is so good to see you again and thank you so, so much for stopping back by to see what I'm up to. And what I'm up to today is I'm continuing on with my Bow Making 101 series. <laughs> and today I'm gonna to be showing you how to do the biggest funky bow that I make. <laughs> It is a 20, yes, I said 20, 20 loop funky bow. Oh my gracious, you guys. And this is a bear to hold, although I've come up with a bit of a technique that I'll show you while I'm making it to, that may help with the cramping in your hand. <clears throat> I am lucky that I do not suffer with uh, arthritis yet anyway, uh, but my hand still does cramp. I mean, you know, it really does when I go to hold these, all of these ribbons together. But anyway, let's and get I started making this funky bow. I'm also going to make it into a topper. So I have my uh, glue gun plugged in here. I'm actually making this, I'm going to use it. I'm just not making it just for demonstration. I am going to utilize it on my front porch for spring. And I'm gonna tie it on, I have a old milk can, one of my grandma's old milk cans and I have it painted black. And I think that this is going to pair beautifully with this. I'll put a, a picture of my front door wreath that I made for spring this year. And, I, and you'll see where the peaches and the corals are coming into it. I'm also adding a bit of black into this one and some polka dots, gold and white polka dots. And it's just going to be a, an eccentric little bow here. I just have some florals here that I'm going to use in the topper. Not all of these, obviously, just a touch of something. And this is simply just going to, I'm just going to tie this right around the, the lip of the uh, milk can. And that's where it's going to sit for spring. Just sitting out there, right, I think I'm going to bring my wicker chair back out there. And I think I'm just going to sit this right next to the chair. So just for something with a plant in it, which I'm not even sure if Chris has any plants. I don't plant. I do not have a green thumb, y'all. I'm just saying, I do not. <laughs> anyway, as you guys saw at the very beginning, you saw me doing some cutting. So let me turn my camera around here and we're gonna get started making this funky bow. I'm gonna show you how to dovetail first and then I'm gonna explain the 20 loop funky bow to you guys. This is a big bow. It is a big fat bow. And it, it's that's, there's just no other way to put it, you guys. Um, Hopefully I can pull this together and hopefully the, the patterns that I've chosen will pair nicely with one another. And I will explain too how I, how I chose these ribbons. I know you guys are always asking me about how do you choose your ribbons and how do you choose the length of ribbon you use and how do you choose the length of uh, loop that you use. So I'm gonna explain all that. So let me turn my camera here and get let's get pointed down here to my ribbons and I'll just start talking with you guys for a little bit about this. Okay, okie dokie. As you can see here, I have five different ribbons. Now you do not have to use five different ribbons. You can use any different, any number of different patterned ribbons. I just wanted to use these five. I wanted to challenge myself, see if I could get five ribbons to go into this 20 loop funky bow. I've got four strips of each ribbon cut at 24 inches long. So the reason I cut them at 24 inches long was because I wanted to have six inch loops and then a six inch tail. Each piece of ribbon makes one, one, one loop in the 20 loop funky bow. So first of all, before we get started making the bow, I want to go ahead and show you how to, how to dovetail. I'm gonna go ahead and do two of these at one time. I fold the ribbon lengthwise like that, and I had to retrain myself. I used to go from the edge up, but now I go from the fold down to the edge at a, at a angle. And that gives us a dove's tail like that. Let me go ahead and get these other pieces dovetailed. Now, let me tell you why I chose the ribbons that I chose. 
I'm building this bow off of this ribbon. And I had this in my coffers. I didn't buy one of these bolts of ribbon at all. I got most of these ribbons from uh, Hobby Lobby. I got this from craftoutlet.com. And I got this from Amazon. And I'll give you links to this at least, but the others, you know, I'm not sure if I'll be able to find you a link. If I can for this on Craft Outlet, I'll get you one. But the other two are just from Hobby Lobby. So, but this, and this ribbon was from, I believe this was from AC Moore last year. I used what I had left on my bolt. I don't know if I saw it this year, you guys, this spring, but that's what I'm building this bow from. And you can see that I, I pulled out the yellow with this. I pulled out the white with the polka dot and I just like the bling of the of the gold in the polka dot. I pulled out, this is actually a dark green, but the milk can I'm using is black. And I really like to use a little bit of black in my bows sometimes. So uh, my black buffalo check, I wanted to pull that in. And then just a corally, this is kind of a deco mesh feeling ribbon and it will hopefully help this all tie in to everything else that I'm going to be doing out there on my porch. Now I do have them arranged in a, in a certain way. I tried to separate those solids in the pattern. I'm gonna go through the pattern as I, I'm gonna pick up one loop at a time and add it to the mix in my hand. And I don't normally like to have solids sitting next to each other. So when I look at these, this looks like a solid, that kind of looks like a solid, and obviously that is a solid. So I wanted to separate the solids with the two patterned ribbon. Don't be afraid to mix your patterns. Although I will say that old adage that our mamas taught us, ladies who are my age and younger, or my age and older, or, or around my age, uh, that old adage that our mom has told us, don't mix stripes and checks. I can't get past that, you guys. So I very rarely will mix stripes and checks. You know, I might do stripes and varying, that look a little different, uh, but I, or, or, or different widths, but I very rarely will mix a check, especially a big check like that with a stripe. So I just wanted to say that. I, I really have no reasoning other than my eye doesn't like it. You know, if you like it and you're making a bow for yourself in your house, this is going to drive me crazy. You guys, I know this ribbon is going to drive me crazy. But we're going to, we're going to try it here. Uh, you make your, you choose your ribbons and you make your bows look how you want them to look because let's face it, they're going to go in your homes, right? You know, unless you're making them to sell, then you need to get with your client and you need to choose your ribbons that they like, you know, and you may not like it, but go with what they like. <laughs> All right, here we go. We're going to start making this bow. I have myself a pipe cleaner right here. Got it set into the side. <clears throat> I'm going to pull my measuring tape out to, you know, a little ways so that I can measure my six inch loops. And I'm gonna go ahead and start with this yellowy color. I'm gonna fold it right in half. Then I'm gonna go find six inches on my tape measure and I'm gonna pinch it together right at that point. And then I'm gonna to go to the back tail and I'm gonna twist it around. Even though this looks like two-sided ribbon, it really and truly is not. It's texturally different on one side and I want it to look the same, at least at this point. All the tails are gonna get all messed up and they're gonna get all, all bungled up within this bow. But at least in my mind, when I made the bow, I had the, the tails pointing in the direction that I wanted them to go. All right, here I go with the next one. Pick up the next, oh, and I did not dovetail those. Look at that, hang on, let me dovetail, I'll be right back. Okay, now, here we go, I'm dovetailed, sorry about that. I'm gonna go to the second, piece of ribbon, strip of ribbon in my pattern. I'm gonna to go to six inches. I'm gonna add it in side by side by side, kind of accordion it in there. And I'm gonna point that loop up from center, center being my thumb. Alrighty, 
and you saw I twisted that back tail forward. And okay, here we go. Next one in the pattern. I'm gonna go all the way through the pattern once with all of the loops pointing up from center, my thumb being center again. So again, I'm gonna add this in, accordion it in, pointing that loop up from center, and I'm gonna twist that back tail to bring both right sides together. Lift you just a smidge. Alrighty. Next, I'm gonna pick up the black buffalo check and fold it in half. Go to six inches, pinch it together at six inches, pointing that loop up from center. Again, going to that back tail. I hold that, the front tail out of my way with my pinky and twist. And as you can see, the ribbon is starting to move back into the crook of my finger. You know, I'm holding it like this and it's just moving it back, moving back ever so slowly into the crook of my finger. And I'm not squeezing it so tight that I can't, that it hurts me. I'm, I, I let off on the pressure. So that helps my hand not to, not to cramp. All right, here we go with this sticky ribbon here. <laughs> ah, fold it in half, go to six inches and I don't know that I'm gonna be real successful at twisting the back tail of this one, but we're gonna try it. Add it in and twist. I can almost guarantee that's not gonna stay into space, into place. But anyway, there we go. There's our first five loops in our 20 loop funky bow. So we're gonna start the pattern over again. This time though, I'm gonna fold it in half, do the same thing. Fold it in half, go to six inches. This time though, I'm gonna turn it and I'm gonna point that loop down from center. Cording it together, pinching it in side by side as best you can, and then twisting that back tail. I'm gonna start working my way through the pattern again, doing the same thing over and over again, pointing that bow down from center, my thumb being center. Again, separating all of those back tails, turning them so that all right sides are pointing the same direction. Again, next one in the pattern. Go to six inches, accordion it together, and twist. Black buffalo check. Six. Pinch it. with this stuff. Oh, got to set my mouth right to do this stuff. <laughs> it does not want to cooperate. Just six inches and point it down. And there we go. We've got 10 loops in our 20 loop funky bow now. You can see it's all back into the crook of my finger. It's gonna get to the point where I can barely hold this. I do not have big hands. I'm a big lady, but I don't have very big hands. So that's where I run into trouble with this one. Here we go, we're gonna start the pattern over again and we're gonna point the loop up from center. Pinching it together, cording it together, just like we've been doing. We go all the way through the pattern again with the loops pointed up. But as I was saying, that's where I run into a little bit of trouble with this bow, just because my hands are little. And I'm not sure if you have smaller hands than me. Again, I don't have huge hands. You might have trouble. It's taking up that whole part of my hand, but I am loosening, I'm letting that thumb up a little bit. I'm not just squeezing it the whole time. Six inches. That's the hardest part, when you go to add it in like that, that's kind of when you have to squeeze and 
kind of open your fingers and manipulate your fingers a little bit, that's what that's when it gets a little harder. Go with the buffalo check. Six inches and accordion it together. And twist. Come on now. <laughs> Ooh. Six inches. And there we go. All right, so that's now 15 loops in our 20 loop funky bow. Got one more time through the pattern to go, and I bet you you can guess which way we're gonna turn that loop. Yep, you guessed it, down from center. I'm gonna turn it down from center. I encourage you guys to cut up your ribbon and then watch my video again and pause it while you add your ribbons in, you know, and follow along with me. You can just pause your video. You don't have to let it play. You can just pause it and then start, start up my Yammerin again whenever you're ready to go on your next loop. You know, you don't have to move as fast as I move. It, not that I'm moving that fast. I don't mean that. But just, you know, it takes a little while to kind of get into the rhythm of these bows. Also, too, I've got a funky bow cheat sheet of which this, the instructions are in writing for this 20 loop. I've got uh, in that cheat sheet, it covers the 9, the 12, the 16, and the 20 loop funky bow. Uh, I encourage you to go to the link in the description of my blog that hold, is the holder of that uh, tutorial or that PDF and download it and print it off. I promise it's safe. <laughs> print that off so that you can look at the written instructions too. That may help. And we've got one more to go. We have pointed all of those ribbons down from center, all those loops. One more of this stuff. <laughs> Ooh, who chose this ribbon? <laughs> and here we go. And my hand is hurting. I cannot tell a lie. It is screaming at me a little bit. But there we go. All right, there's the last one. So that is 20 loops. Wow. Get yourself a pipe cleaner. You don't need your measuring stick anymore. Get yourself a pipe cleaner. Try to find the center and then go lay it across beside your thumb. Kind of lift your thumb if you can wrap the bottom part around the bottom and the top part around the top and use the hand that you're holding the bow shut with. Squeeze it as best you can, you guys. This does not have to be perfect. Squeeze this as best you can. And there are times when I'll even just kind of hold it with the pipe cleaners and come around this way and squeeze it again and then Get these, hand, these fingers on the hand that you're manipulating the pipe cleaner with up as close as you can to the back of the bow. And you want this tight, you guys. So you want to twist, twist, twist. I twist the bow and the pipe cleaner and twist it a lot. You do not want this coming apart. <laughs> Trust me. Except for this ribbon is starting to fray on me. Lovely. This deco mesh stuff. Anyway, you can see I twisted it many times. All right, let me turn back around here. And there we go. We have ourselves a 20 loop funky bow. Now that looks like a hot mess right now, doesn't it? It does not look very pretty. It does not look pretty at all right like that. So the most important part of any craft bow, I don't care if it's two loops or 20, is the fluffing, you guys. The fluffing is the most important part. I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna separate, separate out some of these tails too. Just kind of pull them apart. If they come up and in into the loops, that's okay. It doesn't bother me like that one did. It does not bother me a bit. I just wanna put my hand on every single solitary loop that I made and I wanna pull it up and into the bow. This is what can take me a long time. 
because I'm pretty picky and I like my bows to look a certain way and you know I want to be able to see all of the all of the loops that I made I want them to be peeking out here and there and throughout the bow so get your hand all the way in and down to that pipe cleaner you know and just separate that or, you know open up that loop make it big and pretty sometimes you might have to yank on one that might have slipped down a little bit shorter that's okay yank on it you got it tight enough you're not going to lose the bow look at that is that not pretty i know i have a couple of more of oh, there's one that's another thing turn your bow these peach ones kind of slip to the back of the bow, which is fine. That's fine. It's starting to take some shape now, isn't it? I'm missing a, there it is. Buffalo check one. There we go. That's looking pretty. You are gonna be able to see this from a distance from the yard, from the front yard. There we go. I'm loving it. kind of slip down in there and that's okay if I had it to do again I might use a different one but that's okay it looks pretty all right now I want to cut one piece of ribbon and tie it into the back of this that I'm going to use to tie it around the milk can so I think I'm just going to use the buffalo check and I just want you know I'm not measuring it just a piece that I know that will go around that milk can and I'll be able to tie a bow in the back, you know, just to hold this, this on to the milk can. So I just kind of go to the center, turn over my bow, and I just snug this down into the pipe cleaner. And then, then when I go to pull this onto the milk can, It'll hold that bow nice on there. Okay, so there we go, 20 loop funky bow. Now let's see what we can do to make it maybe look a little bit springier, a little bit prettier, just, you know, to augment what we already have going on in here. I've got, I don't wanna use the lime green, but I do like the peach flowers here. Let me see. Yeah, they just pull right off. I don't want to put florals, big fat florals in to hide my bow but I think I would like to add just a touch here and there. I don't have a lot left on here. I do have some of this. And I do want to leave the green in this. 
because it's a little lighter green. All right, you guys, I'm gonna let this dry and I'll be right back. I'm back here for a second. I found some of these little yellow flowers and I thought how pretty would it be to add just a touch of yellow. I just was taking my ribbon back out in the garage and putting it away and looked up and said, these were like, hello, put me in that bow. <laughs> I said, okay. Definitely, we'll do that. So as you can see, I'm just adding some here and there. Just for a touch of yellow, which I love. I think it looks super pretty. We don't want a lot, you know? Just, just as I say, just the touch. down here. I think I have just enough. <laughs> One more there. I think that'll do it. Yay! What do you know? Oh my goodness, I love what this yellow did to it, you guys. There's something missing, and that was it. All right, now I'm gonna let it dry, and I will be back for some final words. Hey y'all, I'm back, and here I've tied it on to, look at that, onto my milk can. Isn't that pretty? Oh my goodness, you guys. Excuse any wind that you might be hearing. It is actually a beautiful day here in Virginia. Spring is trying to get sprung for sure. So it's starting to come to into bloom here on my front porch. Obviously we'll get a Gerber daisy in there because that's my favorite flower and Chris plants a lot of Gerbers for me each year, but we'll get a Gerber daisy to put in this milk can to go along with this pretty 20 layer funky bow. <laughs> Excuse the wind, it's gonna blow my hair a little bit. I wanted to show you two, uh, I wanted to show you this is what I use on my outdoor decor. I don't spray this on berries, you guys, but I do put it on this bow, and I'm gonna do it right now. Spray it on Never Wet. It's off, hang on, I'll turn it off. 
open it up. Never wet for fabrics, and I just, that's about all I do. And it really does help. It doesn't make my stuff waterproof, but it definitely helps to repel the water. Now I'm gonna move this up on my front door for now to protect it, just in case we get any rain coming through here. We've had some bad weather as of late, so. But anyway, doesn't it look pretty? I'm super happy with how this worked out. I just, I love a funky bow, you guys. Once I learned how to do the funky bows, oh my goodness, I just, I love them. But that'll do it for this one, you guys. I hope you've enjoyed this little ditty. And I hope I taught you something. I was able to teach you something. I, you know, my mama was a teacher, you guys. So was my dad. And so was our daughter, Kristen. Uh, and, you know, my mom always told me, Arlene, you'll find your niche one of these days. You'll do it one of these days, honey. I know you will. I found my niche as a mom. I'm a good mom. I found my niche as a, as a good wife. I'm a good wife. And now I think I've found my niche here on YouTube with my decorating and my crafting and my travels, all of that stuff together. But anyway, hopefully mama's looking down on me and smiling. I never thought I'd be any kind of a teacher. I didn't have enough confidence in myself, you guys, to go to college to become a teacher, to follow in my mom and dad's footsteps. I kick myself now and no, I don't want to go back to college at 50, almost 58, <laughs> 57, I'll be 58 next October. But you know, I, I, I don't need to go to school. I think I found my niche and I love what I do. I love my decorating. I love my crafting. I really am enjoying every second of my time here on YouTube. And we all go through seasons, y'all know. We all go through seasons and I'm really enjoying this season of my life and enjoying all of you and I thank you all so much for all of your support, your love, your hugs, your wonderful comments. Thank you guys so much. Anyway, I'm gonna shut this one out now. So let me just say that I hope that for those of you who are struggling or suffering with a catastrophic illness or chronic pain, I hope that you have someone there with you, taking care of you, helping you get through each day, making the very best out of each day. I hope there's nothing weighing on your minds or your hearts, pulling your attention away from where you want it to be or from where it should be. I love y'all to bits, to bits, to bits, hugs all around. And I keep you in my thoughts and my prayers every single day. And with all that said, I'll just say, until next time, y'all take good, good care. Bye-bye.